So I guess you believe, and I, I certainly believe there's greatness in all of us, you know, and it's, it's our ability to recognize that and let go of the past so that we can actually let that come through. But there's some people sitting at home going, oh, it's easy for us to say. Uh, it's not easy for us to say. We all, you know, we all have our struggles. But how does someone create and get off the couch, get off that chair and start creating more motivation, per, you know, motivation towards what they want in life? Okay. Um, so for anyone that's seen Dr. John D. Martini's work, um, uh, I have different meanings in terms of etymology. I'll say that um, the greatest thing I can advise is uh, if you need motivation to do it, don't do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the word motivation, um, the first part of that word is motive. So if motive is required for you to do something, it's ex extrinsically driven. Something outside of you is trying to get you to do that. So you'd have to be injecting the values of someone or something else or an authority figure into you to do it. It's artificial. So, artificial. Right. So it's the example of when I was at school and mum and dad were saying, I, I, I resented maths, which is something I'm actually relearning and appreciating to a whole different level now. And I remember I was into basketball. Uh, whatever they suppressed, I wanted to address. Because the more they came down on me, the more I built, and this is a natural thing inside of a human being. In fact, a lot of what we're calling juvenile behavior by children quite often is the suppression of the parents and the children feeling bogged down by that are creating a curiosity because they want to see the balance in that area. Mm -hmm. So when I was younger and my dad, who had grown up and seen what had happened when you spend too much time socializing his infinite wisdom as an adult, tried to challenge me and make sure that I didn't go out I created a curiosity because the mind works in a perfect balanced state and that curiosity wanted nothing but to understand what that was about. So the more that he tried to, and you may have experienced this in a relationship or friendship, the more people want you to not do something, quite often you want to go out and do it totally. even more because yeah. you feel there's a void in that area. You want what you can't have. Exactly. Yeah. So um, the more that he um, challenged that, the more I wanted to go out and socialize and play basketball. So when he injected his values into me, I rejected whatever it was that he did and it only strengthened my drive for the other side. Right. So uh, he, to do what he wanted, I needed motivation. I, I started to procrastinate in those areas. I hesitated, I judged myself and I beat myself up. Mm. So I don't recommend motivation. If, if any personal development program that recommends motivation, you're working with amateurs because they're trying to get you to do something. Uh, I believe the highest level of self-mastery is inspiration. Inspiration mm. starts with in. So that's mm. intrinsic as compared to extrinsic. Mm. And whatever you're inspired by with, from within, you're organized, disciplined, reliable, and focused. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to find out what our inner calling is and express that on the outer world. Mm. So uh, I believe if we stop looking for outer external motivation and listen to the voice and the vision within, then we'll actually really start to master our lives. A great way for your followers to do that is to look up drdmartini.com, top right side of the page, have a look at the values determination. Great book for that is The Values Factor, also by Dr. John D. Martini. In fact, I will not see a client until in their first consultation I get two things underway. First off, I do an emotional x-ray. I want to find out for their whole life everything they perceive to be positive and negative because they're storing that physiologically and they're the things that occupy interesting time and space in their mind preventing them from being able to move forward their fears guilt shames everything um, how, how often have you caught yourself during the day negative talking and just being stuck in a rut for a few hours totally that needs to yeah. be balanced so i find out that and the second thing i find out is what is truly most valuable because if I find out the thing that's truly most valuable, where you're spontaneously organized, disciplined, reliable, and focused, or where you think about and set goals towards and achieve, then we can fast track your success. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're looking in an area and you need motivation to do it, it's not high on your values. Now, can you increase something on your values? Most certainly. Okay. So what if you're mastering three areas of life, physical, spiritual, mental, but not finances. You're going to have problems. Mm. You're going to forever work for somebody else and build up their visions instead of working for yourself, mm. being able to work out yours. So you can values link as well. So I know that there are different areas and elements of my company when I'm working through them. I don't always have the largest amount of appreciation. I love working with clients. I'll book clients back to back, uh, working with them, applying methods and the most advanced technology I have to assist them to grow. I love doing that. I love talks. I love interviews. Uh, I may not enjoy listening to accounts talk about what's going on. I prefer <laughs> right. for accounts to handle that. That's what I want them to do. Sorry. Addressing profit, um, right. but sometimes when I'm looking and hearing the different formulas and strategies, I I'm working on that. Yeah. So one of the things you can do is write down 
200 benefits of whatever it is you're perceiving that you need motivation to do so you can increase the value of it. Mm. So let's say for myself, the understanding of finances and investment, which is something I'm getting into now, I've actually built up the value for. Yep. So if I split and put into columns, and I've spoken to you about this, your highest value, which you'd have to go to Dr. Martini's site so you can get the 13 questions yep. dissecting your life and understand that. Then I take the seven areas of life, so I'd have highest value, physical, financial, mental, spiritual, social, vocation, and family. And I really dug deep and I started writing down maybe 20 or 30 in each. However, 30 would give you about 240, so maybe 25 or so, whatever the correct number was. Yep. And I started going through and stacking up value. And the more that I stack those values, I'll neurologically reprogram myself to actually see value in it. Because every human being is doing whatever they perceive to have more advantages than disadvantage, benefits and drawbacks, service and disservice. So we can change our perceptions in that way too, mm. build up the value of things. <clears throat> just comes back to the fact that change can happen just straight away. Instantaneously. Instantaneously, um, yeah. So we have a thing called neurology, and one thing that science has now proven is that we have neuroplasticity within the mind, mm. and that our mind is never the same. Mm. That's why if you and I are sitting here and some drastic event was to happen, a car was to go through the wall or a bus or something, yeah. and let's say a certain song was playing, we can anchor onto that song and the next time that it comes on, we actually get a feeling and a stimulus straight away. An anchor. So, yeah, an anchor. Yeah. So instantaneously, we've just changed our neurology and reprogrammed something in. Mm. And that's happening every day. So we, we're not the same people that we've always been. We may have some of the similar associations to certain things that have been anchored in, but we have the ability to change those. And I've watched that in a quarter of a thousand clients. So it's not even something that I second guess. I, I know that. I watch it happen daily. Mm. And just to... To clarify, guys, Dr. John Demartini uh, is an absolute genius. So definitely go check out that website. That is a, a must, finding out your values. Because if you don't know what you value, what happens? Well, I, I love one of the things that I read recently off a post of John's. And it said, um, how are you meant to be yourself if you don't know who you are? And quite often growing up, I, I remember thinking um, my dad wanted me to become a doctor. He also wanted me to become a priest. And he also wanted me to become a pilot. Um, I was scared of flying for a while, so uh, I don't think he really got it on that one. Um, I left religion many years ago, so I don't think he got it right on that one. And, um, and I don't, I haven't had, I haven't seen a doctor for four or five years and I haven't had any pharmaceutical products inside mm. me for four or five years. I've been self-healing for that long. So um, I believe where he did get it interestingly correct was, um, I don't know if it was Catholic or Christian, that's one of those that my dad appreciated, but there was a gentleman by the name of Jesus, some of you may have heard of, and uh, he traveled, Yeah, maybe, <laughs> don't know, it all matters. If you go back to the Egyptian era, you'd have a different name for it, sure, uh, for the same different. teachings. Mm -hmm. um, so he traveled and shared his wisdom. I travel and I share my wisdom. Um, I'm not a pilot, but I love flying, and I've mm. done, uh, I do flying quite a bit. Interesting. And um, a doctor is a healer, and I've had a lot of clients that I've worked with, with depressions and anxieties <clears throat> and a whole lot of other symptoms that have spontaneously been healed as I've been working with them. So um, in that degree, there are elements in what he was looking for that I'm doing, just in a different form to what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. So, mm. Kind of got what you wanted, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad. <laughs> um, well, I guess at the same time, he wanted you to do those things, so he's putting his values on you, right? Yeah. So he projected his values onto me in what he perceived to be the correct thing to do. I don't believe my father was doing anything other than asking himself as he grew up, um, not having money. He grew up in a very racist Australia back then as well. So um, my surname's Anthony. So when he went to work, they thought he was white. And when he'd pop in and they'd see this black electrician, I remember once he packed his lunch and everything and he's got, he's just come to Australia. They only came with $2,000. He's got two children, one on the way, both uh, once for myself, my sister's free. Mm -hmm. And he, my dad loves working. He, he hadn't had a period where he hadn't worked for a while. Mm -hmm. And there he's not working for ages on the dole. Right. And he, he didn't appreciate that. He didn't, he saw no value in himself. And the interesting and the blessing and the stressing was because no one would hire him, he thought, I'm going to go out and friggin' do this thing myself. So he went out and created wow. his own business, and he's been doing that um, probably since I was about seven or ten or something. He was very successful at that as an electrician. But he wouldn't have done that if someone had hired him. So the, the blessing in all of those is it actually created a drive in him to master his financial destiny. Right. Yeah, but so, so he was doing that, 
because he really felt that um, that was the path and that was the greatest thing he knew in his awareness that would mean that we would be able to financially look after ourselves and have a respectable career. Because my dad very much is about others on the outside, especially because he's very much, he's into the Mauritian community. Um, I don't really abide by any of that. I, I outgrew that and religion and a whole bunch of things a long time ago when I studied them. Um, I'm a human being and I belong to planet Earth. I don't really see these things. Me too. Yeah. So <laughs> you, you guys as nice well. Nice to meet you guys as well. <laughs> And I think cultures have their beauty, but quite often they also have these dogmatic sort of kind of spherical thinking. Mm. So um, there were a lot of things that were going on. I said, this is pure insanity because the Greeks don't do that. The Italians don't do that. But you guys will. And they're wrong. But you're right. Yeah. But they're telling your. And I said, this is crazy. I'm just a human being. I love you all for who you are. No matter what age, color, sex, creed, I, I love it all. So he was projecting values onto me so the society would accept him and appreciate him as well as myself. Yeah. And he thought that was what was correct. Right. And I broke through that and said, I can't do this because every time I do what you want, I realize that I'm procrastinating. I'm not doing it. I'm judging myself. And my mind is consistently drawing me to something that's even more empowered that I want to do. Right. So I decided to just follow my heart. Mm. I said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to see what happens. And I realized that my resilience went up. Because at the time, I loved playing basketball, and I could play for hours. I spontaneously was organized. Nobody had to tell me to study footage of Michael Jordan for four or five hours. Nobody had to tell me to go out and run and stay fit. Nobody had to tell me to make sure that I ate at the right time. Mm. So I realized that every human being, based in their unique set of values, has a genius in that area. I didn't know it at the time until I studied values with Dr. John D. Martini at the Breakthrough Experience four or five years ago, I believe, or three years ago. And I'd already had an intuition inside of me and getting me to do that. And I believe you have your whole life as well. Um, mm. I, I've, I've spent time with you and you've just got personal development stuff surrounding you at all, all times of your day. It's all no, around you. Nobody <laughs> has to tell you to do that. Yeah. So if my job isn't really telling people what that is. It's more showing them what their life already represents. So I'm mm. telling them, but in a way they already knew it inside. Yeah. And every time they went with that, they felt inspired and they expanded their sphere and they wanted to grow and they couldn't wait to take on more challenges. Every right. time they went against that, mm -hmm. we have disease, disorder, cell entropy, growth, enlightenment. So they're just different ends of the spectrum. And uh, Well, just to recap, you can, I guess, never push anything on anyone. You can never make anyone do anything. Well, I guess you, you can, can make them do it, but you can never really echo. make anyone do anything. I, yeah. I love this. Um, linguistically, most people don't take the time to linguistically analyze what they're saying or others are giving them. Every time you open your mouth, you're selling something. Mm -hmm. And the word sell means to serve, so you're serving something out for someone. And a lot of people are selling uh, and serving crap sandwiches. So um, careful what you eat. Um, it, it, what I say? You, you are what you eat. And, there's um, some good recipes on the blog, though. Yeah, yeah. The, re <laughs> the, the recipes on the blog are fantastic. I remember the first time I came here and hung out with you, there's just fruits and stuff everywhere and veggies, and that was cool. Um, but the, the green smoothie treatment. Yeah. Nothing but the best around here. It's excellent. <laughs> excellent. Highly recommend it. Um, you're going to have a hundred fans coming to your door waiting for that tomorrow. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? So we, Pushing something on someone. You can't make anyone do anything. So some selling and, and service. Yeah. So sometimes we're not actually listening to what we're linguistically suggesting to others. And what people will say to you is, Sean came up to me when I was younger a gentleman by the name of Sean Myers, uh, who I've spoken to and is an amazing human being. Um, in primary school, because I was minimizing myself mentally and physically, we attract the opposites of ourselves. This is the bully. This is the perceived bully. Yeah. Um, and he came in and he was exaggerating himself in that area because he was walking around, you know, I'll kick your butt, I'll do whatever you want. Right. And um, he had a higher value on physical because he felt that he was stronger and he wanted to show people that and a higher value and mental than what I did. But he was exaggerating himself. I was minimizing myself. At the middle of these two, we have right. a perfect synthesis and synchronicity. So I, at the time, believed he made me eat the grass, but I had a choice. We always have a choice. Mm -hmm. I could have chosen not to, but I thought I was going to get hurt because I had a high value for not getting hurt. Mm -hmm. If somebody was to say that to me now, I'd freaking take him on. <laughs> so I've got a higher value for making sure that there's a balanced exchange in space and time. So we're actually, believe it or not, attracting the complementary opposite. And whenever we say that person made me do that, we're attracting somebody that's exaggerating in a certain area, in an area that we're not valuing. They're trying to teach us how to value that area. If it's in business, and I have a very good friend of mine, a best friend that consistently said she was getting bullied in business, and one day I just pulled her aside during a dinner, and I said, you're not getting friggin' bullied, you're not standing up for yourself. 
Okay, the first time it happened, I listened to you and I said, okay, this will be interesting, maybe you'll grow. But this happened two or three times. You really need to understand that you're letting this happen. This is a two-player participation game. And until you learn how to actually go out and stand up for yourself, you want to continually have that. Because in every workplace, you have this, these dynamics happening and every person's teaching each other. Mm -hmm. I said, um, you need to learn how to stand up for yourself. And she did. She had a certain situation within a year of that where she ended up taking a company to court where someone was trying to project their values onto her. So uh -huh. she was teaching him that he had to balance out his exchanges. He couldn't just project it what he wanted onto people. Otherwise, he'd be paying lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. Yeah. And uh, he taught her how to stand up for herself, and she changed the way in what she was looking for and her expectations of the world and what she hired. Great synthesis and synchronicity right there. Balance. Yeah. Mm.